This is Chapter 11, Organic Reactions, and it's actually Lesson 7, but it, this, this is the second half of the Organic Chemistry Unit. You've already had your test on naming and writing various organic compounds, and then for the second half we're just going to focus on the organic reactions. By the time we've gotten through all seven of the organic reactions, you will be able to recognize and complete various reactions, including describing the reaction that is taking place. So let's start with combustion. Combustion is an old friend of ours. We talked about this when we talked about um, electrochemistry because combustion exhibits both oxidation and reduction. It usually starts with a hydrocarbon, an alkane, an alkene or alkyne, and is burned in the presence of oxygen. So O2 is a reactant and it produces water and carbon dioxide. So let's just start with C3H8 and we know this as um, propane. So we're starting with propane which is classified as an alkane and we're always going to add oxygen to it and remember oxygen must be written as O2 because it's diatomic. Now, you have to memorize the products. The products are always going to be water and carbon dioxide, and it doesn't matter what order you write them in. So H2O and CO2. So you just write them down. And then you actually have to balance the equation. Now, If I have three C's on the left, I need three C's on the right. So I'm going to try putting three C's here. I have eight hydrogens, so I need a total of eight hydrogens here. So now I've got three times two is six on the oxygen, plus four oxygens here is a total of ten oxygens, so I need five oxygens here. So this is what the balanced equation looks like. All I can tell you and all I can stress is that this reactant will change, okay? This reactant changes. Everything else in the equation is going to be there. So regardless whether it's propane, butane, hexene, doesn't matter what hydrocarbon I start with. This is always going to be oxygen, this is always going to be water, and this is always going to be carbon dioxide. The ratios at which they are present, okay, will be dictated by whatever hydrocarbon we start with. So that's the first one. Substitution. Substitution sounds exactly like the word. When you go to a restaurant and you order dinner, your dinner might come with, I don't know, turkey, mashed potatoes, and peas. And you say to the waitress, I don't like peas, I like carrots. Can I substitute my peas for carrots? And she says, yes, of course. Why am I bringing this up? Because in substitution, you have to give up something in order to get something. So one plus hydrogen atoms in a saturated alkane are replaced by another substituted group. For example, if I have C3H8 plus Cl2. So what I have here is an alkane plus a halogen and this is what it usually takes place with and I am going to produce a halo carbon and an acid so let's draw this out as we, I, I know I didn't finish the products up here but I want to draw out what we have so far because it's easier to see when it's drawn out so here is my propane as you can see, it is saturated. 
meaning that it has all single bonds. We already learned this when we talked about characteristics. And now I'm trying to add Cl2. Well, I can't add Cl2 because all of these are H's. It's completely filled, kind of like your plate with the turkey and the mashed potatoes and peas, and you want carrots. So what I have to do is I have to give up an H. doesn't matter which H. Let's say I give up this H, and that's going to come over here. Then I can put a CL on in its spot. So I'm going to put HCL here. I'm going to redraw what we had. And in this spot right over here, I put CL. And then the rest of these are H's. I normally don't draw them out, but for purposes of demonstration, I will. So I removed one H, and that H combined with the extra CL, because I didn't put both of them on. I only put one on. And H is plus one, and CL is minus one. So now I have a halo carbon. This is the halo carbon, and then this is the acid. If I were to name this halo carbon, it would be chloropropane. Now I can put a one if I want to, but if I don't put a one, it's assumed that it's on the first carbon. Okay, or I can put the one. One chloropropane. It's on the first carbon and there's three in the parent chain. That is substitution. I took something off to add something on. Now, some keys to recognizing substitution. Some keys. First of all, you're starting with an alkane. That's the first thing. And so I'm just going to put start with alkane. Second, you're going to have two products. Two products. One of them is going to be the substituted halo carbon, and the other is going to be an acid. Now let's see how this differs from addition. Addition reaction. It's going to, you're going to do exactly like what it sounds. You are going to add everything. So we're going to start with an unsaturated hydrocarbon. There's the difference between, one difference between substitution and addition. So we're starting with a double or triple bond. So that means that we're starting with um, start with alkene or alkyne. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take that double or triple bond and turn it into a single bond. So let's look at an example. C2H4. Actually, I forgot to finish this. I'm sorry. This should be HCl. And then we have C3H7Cl. Sorry. And we're going to add something to it. Let's make it uh, Br2 this time. And we're actually going to produce C2H4Br2. And let me show you how we do that. So we've got ethene. So we have an alkene or alkyne, depending on what we're starting with. And we're going to add a halogen. In this case, we're adding bromine. And we're going to produce a halo carbon. So we know this has a double bond here. This is what it looks like, the C2H4 plus Br2. What we're going to do is turn this double bond into a single bond. Let's put our H's back where they were. We have one here, one here, 
one here, one here. What this does is open up two more bond sites here and here by taking that double and creating a single bond. And then these were H's originally, but now you can add your bromines. So what I have here, and remember this is a three-dimensional molecule, so the bromine can go on any one of the, the first C's and on any one of the second C's. So this is going to be 1, 2, di, bromo, ethane. The 1, 2 tells us the location of the bromines. The di tells us that there are two of them. Bromo tells us that it is bromine and we have two carbons so it's F all single bonds. Okay, the last one that we're going to go through is esterification. Esterification is probably the most difficult out of the seven reactions. It's when an ester is created by putting an alcohol and an acid together. So it's an alcohol plus an acid yields a ester and water. We have an organic acid, ethanoic acid, plus an alcohol, CH3OH methanol is going to yield CH3COOCH3 and water. So here's our organic acid, here's our alcohol producing an ester, and we can tell that by the functional group here in the middle, and water. So let's start by drawing each part of it. I've got CH3COOH. This is my ethanoic acid. So I'm going to put this down here so you can see the name. Plus my alcohol, CH3OH. So this is methanol. Okay. So what happens? Well, we're going to take the H off of the acid and we're going to take the OH off of the alcohol and we're going to produce water. So this is also known as dehydration synthesis because we are removing water. And I'm going to produce an ester. I'm going to want to write the part that came from the acid first, so I'm going to copy what's left. CH3COO. Then I'm going to take what is left of the alcohol, which is simply a CH3, and I'm going to add that on. That's my ester. Notice the functional group C double bond OO in the middle. So I produced water. Now we have to name this thing. The part, latter part of the molecule came from the alcohol. So this came from the alcohol, this right here. And we take the prefix plus YL and we name that first. So we have one, which is meth, add the YL, this becomes methyl. Then this part came from the organic acid. And that's named last. So we had two C's, so that's F, so it's ethane, 
and then we change the ending to O-A-T-E, ethanoate. Okay, I'm going to go through one more of these, just so it's a little bit more clear, because this is the most difficult one. So this time, let's take... Um, butanoic acid and propanol and undergo a reaction. So butanoic acid is going to be 4 C's double bond O OH plus propanol and alcohol it's going to be 3 C's with an OH. I'm going to remove the O from the acid and I'm going to remove the OH from the alcohol and I'm going to create H2O. I write what's left of the acid, my four C's, double bond O, O. Then I add what's left of the alcohol, which is three C's, and then I have to put all my H's over here. Now I need to name it. Remember with the naming, what's drawn last is named first. Three C's, add the YL, so propyl. Then the first part, I've got one, two, three, four. Butane, drop the E, add O, A, T -E. Propyl butanoate. Okay, that's it for today. We have gone over combustion, substitution, addition, and esterification. That only leaves us fermentation, saponification, and two forms of polymerization for the last lesson.